American Airlines Flight 965 was a regularly scheduled flight from Miami International Airport in Miami, Florida, to Alfonso Bonilla Aragon International Airport in Cali, Colombia. On December 20, 1995, the Boeing 757-200 flying this route registration N651AA crashed into a mountain in Buga, Colombia, killing 151 out of the 155 passengers and all eight crew members. The crash was the first U.S.-owned 757 accident and is currently the deadliest aviation accident to occur in Colombia. It was also the deadliest accident involving a Boeing 757 at that time, but was surpassed by Bergenair Flight 301 which crashed seven weeks later with 189 fatalities. Flight 965 was the deadliest air disaster involving a U.S. carrier since the bombing of Pan Am Flight 103 in 1988. Five passengers, all seated within two rows of each other, survived the initial impact, but one died two days later of his injuries. In addition to the four human survivors, a dog, who had been in a carrier in the cargo hold at the time of the crash, survived the incident. The Colombian Special Administrative Unit of Civil Aeronautics investigated the accident and determined it was caused by navigational errors by the flight crew. Topic: Aircraft. The aircraft was a Boeing 757-223 registered N651AA. Its first flight was on August 12, 1991, and was the 390th Boeing 757 built. The aircraft was powered by two Rolls-Royce RB211 engines. Topic: <inaudible> Flight history. Topic: <inaudible> 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 Departure. At that time, Flight 965 mainly carried people returning to Colombia for the Christmas holiday, vacationers and businesspeople. A winter storm in the northeast United States caused the airline to delay the departure of the airliner for 30 minutes to allow for connecting passengers to board the flight, so Flight 965 pushed back from Gate D33 in Miami at 5.14 p.m., and then taxied to runway 27R, but seasonal congestion caused the 757 to take off at 6.35 p.m., one hour 21 minutes late. The cockpit crew consisted of Captain Nicholas Tafuri, age 57, and First Officer Don Williams, age 39. Both pilots were considered to be highly skilled airmen. Captain Tafuri had more than 13,000 hours of flying experience and First Officer Williams had almost 6,000 hours. The cabin crew consisted of purser Pedro Pablo Calle and flight attendants Magdalena Barrero, Rosa Cabrello, Teresa Delgado, Gilberto Restrepo, and Margaret Maggie Villalobos. All cabin crew personnel were born in Colombia and were veterans from Braniff International Airways who had moved to Eastern Airlines and then to American Airlines, when the routes were transferred from one airline to the other. They had voluntarily chosen the flight, as a prerogative awarded by seniority, to spend Christmas time with their families in Bogotá. Topic. 
Topic: <laughs> Going off course. Cali's air traffic controllers had no functional radar to monitor the 757, as it had been blown up in 1992 by the terror group FOC. Cali's approach uses several radio beacons to guide pilots around the mountains and canyons that surround the city. The airplane's flight management system already had these beacons programmed in, and should have, in theory, told the pilots exactly where to turn, climb, and descend, all the way from Miami to the terminal in Cali. Since the wind was calm, Cali's controllers asked the pilots whether they wanted to fly a straight in approach to runway 19 rather than coming around to runway 01. The pilots agreed to approach straight in, hoping to make up some time. The pilots then erroneously cleared the approach waypoints from their navigation computer. When the controller asked the pilots to check back in over Tuluwa, north of Cali, it was no longer programmed into the computer, and so they had to pull out their maps to find it. In the meantime, they extended the aircraft's speed brakes to slow it down and expedite its descent. By the time the pilots found Tuluwa's coordinates, they had already passed over it. In response to this, they attempted to program the navigation computer for the next approach waypoint, Rozo. However, the Rozo NDB was identified as R on their charts. Colombia had duplicated the identifier for the Romeo NDB near Bogota, and the computer's list of stored waypoints did not include the Rozo NDB as R, but only under its full name, Rozo. In cases where a country allowed duplicate identifiers, it often listed them with the largest city first. In other words, the Rozo waypoint should have been at the top of the FMS, as it was the nearest one, but in the case of Flight 965, it was not. Only several other waypoints that began with R were displayed. By picking the first R from the list, the captain caused the autopilot to start flying a course to Bogota, resulting in the airplane turning east in a wide semicircle. By the time the error was detected, the aircraft was in a valley running roughly north-south parallel to the one they should have been in. The pilots had put the aircraft on a collision course with a 3,000-metre mountain. The air traffic controller, Nelson Rivera Ramirez, believed that some of the requests of the pilots did not make sense, but did not know enough non-aviation English to convey this. Topic. Crash Twelve seconds before the plane hit the mountain, named El Deluvio the deluge, the ground proximity warning system activated, announcing an imminent terrain collision and sounding an alarm. Within a second of this warning the first officer disengaged the autopilot, and the captain attempted to climb clear of the mountain, however, neither pilot had remembered to disengage the previously deployed speed brakes, which reduced the rate of climb. At 9 hours 41 minutes and 28 seconds p.m. Eastern Standard Time it struck trees at about 2,700 meters 8,900 feet above mean sea level MSL on the east side of the mountain. 
The crash was 9.7 kilometers, 6 miles south of Tuluá VOR and 45 kilometers, 28 miles north of the approach end of runway 19 at Alfonso Bonilla Aragon International Airport. During the investigations, it was found that neither the Boeing fixed base simulator nor the flight management system simulator could be backdriven with the data obtained directly from the accident airplane's flight data recorder. Because the 757 flight simulators could not be backdriven during the tests, it could not be determined with precision whether the airplane would have missed the mountain tree tops if the speed brakes had been retracted during the climb attempt. However, the final report stated that if the flight crew had retracted the speed brakes one second after initiating the escape maneuver, the airplane could have been climbing through a position that was 46 meters (150 feet) above the initial impact point. Because the airplane would have continued to climb and had the potential to increase its rate of climb, it might well have cleared the trees at the top of the mountain. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Crash investigation and final report. The crash was investigated by the Special Administrative Unit of Civil Aeronautics Aeronautica Civil of the Republic of Colombia, with assistance from the U.S. National Transportation Safety Board US. NTSB as well as other parties, including the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration, Allied Pilots Association, American Airlines, Boeing Commercial Airplane Group and Rolls-Royce Engines. The Aeronautica Civil prepared a final report of its investigation in September 1996, which was released through the USNTSB. In its report, the Aeronautica Civil determined the following probable causes of the accident. The flight crew's failure to adequately plan and execute the approach to runway 19 at SKCL and their inadequate use of automation. Failure of the flight crew to discontinue the approach into Cali, despite numerous cues alerting them of the inadvisability of continuing the approach. The lack of situational awareness of the flight crew regarding vertical navigation, proximity to terrain, and the relative location of critical radio aids. Failure of the flight crew to revert to basic radio navigation at the time when the Flight Management System FMS assisted navigation became confusing and demanded an excessive workload in a critical phase of the flight. In addition, the Aeronautica Civil determined that the following factors contributed to the accident. The flight crew's ongoing efforts to expedite their approach and landing in order to avoid potential delays. The flight crew's execution of the GPWS escape maneuver while the speed brakes remained deployed. FMS logic that dropped all intermediate fixes from the displays in the event of execution of a direct routing. FMS generated navigational information that used a different naming convention from that published in navigational charts. The Aeronautica Civil's report also included a variety of safety related recommendations to the following parties, number of individual recommendations in parentheses. USFAA 17 International Civil Aviation Organization 3 American Airlines 2 investigators later labeled the accident a non-survivable event
Topic: Aftermath. Scavengers took engine thrust reversers, cockpit avionics, and other components from the crashed 757, using Colombian military and private helicopters to go to and from the crash site. Many of the stolen components reappeared as unapproved aircraft parts on the black market in Greater Miami Parts Brokers. In response, the airline published a 14-page list stating all of the parts missing from the crashed aircraft. The list included the serial numbers of all of the parts. In 1997, U.S. District Judge Stanley Marcus ruled that the pilots had committed willful misconduct. The ruling applied to American Airlines, which represented the dead pilots. The judge's ruling was subsequently reversed in June 1999 by the U.S. Court of Appeals in Atlanta, which also overturned the jury verdict and declared that the judge in the case was wrong in issuing a finding of fault with the pilots, a role which should have been reserved for the jury only. American Airlines settled numerous lawsuits brought against it by the families of the victims of the accident. Incident. American Airlines filed a third party complaint lawsuit for contribution against Jeppesen and Honeywell, which made the navigation computer database and failed to include the coordinates of Rozo under the identifier R. The case went to trial in United States District Court for the Southern District of Florida in Miami. At the trial, American Airlines admitted that it bore some legal responsibility for the accident. Honeywell and Jeppesen each contended that they had no legal responsibility for the accident. In June 2000, the jury found that Jeppesen was 30% at fault for the crash, Honeywell was 10% at fault, and American Airlines was 60% at fault. An enhanced ground proximity warning system was introduced in 1996, which could have prevented the accident. Since 2002, aircraft capable of carrying more than six passengers are required to have an advanced terrain awareness warning system. As of November 2017, American Airlines still operates the Miami Cali route, but as American Airlines Flight 921 and using a Boeing 737 to 800. Topic: Notable passengers. Paris Canellicus, a computer scientist at Brown University, died with his wife and two children. The U.S. encountered difficulty while trying to distinguish Americans from non-Americans, as many passengers held dual citizenships. Topic in popular culture. The events of Flight 965 were featured in Lost, a season two, 2004 episode of the Canadian TV series Mayday. Call it air emergency and air disasters in the U.S. and air crash investigation in the U.K. and elsewhere around the world. The episode was broadcast with the title, Crash on the Mountain, in the United Kingdom, Australia and Asia. The accident was also featured on Why Planes Crash on MSNBC, in an episode titled, Sudden Impact. The episode, Disastrous Descents. Of the TV series Air Crash Confidential, produced by WMR Productions and IMG Entertainment, featured the accident. 
The Sound of Things Falling, a 2011 novel by Juan Gabriel Vazquez Bloomsbury 2012 in English, translated by Anne MacLean. See also Air Inter Flight 148 Air New Zealand Flight 901 Prinair Flight 277 Crew Resource Management Ground Proximity Warning System List of accidents and incidents involving commercial aircraft